Greetings, flesh creatures. It is I, Megatron. On behalf of TFYLP, I want to congratulate you for listening to the most refined collector podcast on this miserable little planet Earth. Yes. Here you'll find knowledgeable fans discussing every aspect of Transformers and beyond. Now, enjoy the show while I continue my path to complete conquest of all of you miserable biological entities. Predacons, terrorize! We now return to the TFYLP podcast. <laughs> okay. So, uh, should we rename the show to say the only constant is that we're going to have some kind of issue on the show when we go live? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, it's it's so weird because uh, everything tested fine, you know, going up to going live. And then uh, once you click live, it's like the whole computer just goes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, you know, as such. Anyway. Hello, Dude, everyone. Yeah. I am Drawn Land, aka Weird Wolf. Along with me this evening is Lucas Bachman. Hey. Sean McGinnis. Hello. Jack Brenner. Hi. And Jim Black. Happy birthday. Happy birthday on birth uh, on birthday boy. Yeah, yeah. Look at that. I appreciate you showing up for the show on your birthday, Jim. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, at least your birthday wasn't yesterday. What happened yesterday? Well, because if, oh, it not was, much. if it was yesterday, you might not have woken up for the show. I'll yeah, wake up today. It'll have been hungover. <laughs> yeah, my, my, my little dude was up biggest part of the night off and on. So, man, I just, I, I woke up with about 40 minutes to spare and had to hurry up and shower and get around before time to you know, get on the show today. So, I made it, though. I was the same. I didn't wake up till like, at least... 45, 50 minutes before the show was supposed to start. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. I had this going on today. Yep. <laughs> I, I slept off and on last night. I didn't hardly sleep at all. I didn't go but, to the work till one in the morning. So I was just like, yeah, I'll just kind of sleep in till, you know, such and such time. And I checked my phone. Oh, I got to get up. <laughs> all right. Uh, today's episode, uh, we're going to be talking about, uh, as the episode's title is, is uh, the only constant is change. Uh, we've talked about on this show before how people's collecting habits change uh, and everything. Now we're going to take a little look at, as a Transformers fan, uh, how the fandom, how we as individuals have changed uh, in our interactions with other fans and other, uh, other outlets uh, regarding Transformers. Uh, Lucas, you want to kind of fill in a little bit more about that? Yeah. So, I mean, I, I think all of us like over the years and, and I know that, uh, Michael, uh, Swift on, uh, had posted a thing asking like, how long have you all been a collector of, of transformers? And, you know, a lot of us are filling in, you know, whether it is, you know, a couple years or, you know, some of us are 19 years or whatever it may be. Um, and, and so, you know, that kind of, I, I was thinking about that and just how much my experience has changed through, uh, you know, through the years. So, you know, when I first started and, you know, for, was just literally just going to the store to, to Walmart to pick up some figures versus actually, you know, finding TFW or Cybertron or, uh, just, you know, any of those types of websites to, you know, kind of, you know, where, where we're at now. So I'm sure that, all of us kind of have a different experience of what we're, you know, doing now in 2019 versus, you know, what was going on, you know, back in the day. So that, that's kind of, you know, what we want to uh, touch on and just kind of how, you you know, different phases that you've had in, in collecting as well. You know, uh, just bringing, uh, bringing that up, you know, back whenever I was a kid, you know, you go into a, a, an aisle, it was, not uncommon to see three or four people on the aisle looking at transformers. And sometimes there was no people, but you know, as you got into adulthood and you're an adult collector, I remember my very first interactions with other collectors was like, I, I don't know 
Yeah, you know, it's like it's like I didn't want to talk to them at all, acknowledge that they were yep. there. You know, uh, whenever you you I bought the toys, you know, it's like yeah, they're for me. But if they asked, but I just let on like they weren't. Um, but it it was one of those things where. I kind of had to kind of like grow into actually talking to other fans. Um, wh- what do you guys uh, say about that? And, and have any similar experiences? Oh, yeah, I, I'm it was still, pretty. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Lucas. Well, I was going to say, I, I'm still like that. I still, it, it's a little weird being on the podcast and, and people, you know, like other Facebook friends that aren't into Transformers going, Oh, what what is this thing that you're on? Like, what what do you do and, and and all that? So yeah, I definitely definitely feel that. Just tell me you're a transformer celebrity. <laughs> yeah, kind really of a impressed. big deal. <laughs> oh, are you in the movies? No, I'm just on a podcast. Oh, it's like it's like in my world, I am the whole effing show. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> But no, seriously though, I mean, it's it's one of those things where the awkwardness for me eventually went away, uh, and a lot of that went from uh, meaning, uh, me, meaning, meeting uh, fellow Talk. collector, yeah, meeting fellow collectors uh, online, um, and a lot of them actually happened to be locals. Uh, eventually, um, I, I remember maybe two or three years. Um, went by after I started getting online before I actually met the fir- the first local. Um, and that was in St. Galvatron. And he lived about two hours from me, an hour and a half, two hours from me at the time, uh, which kind of isn't local, but it is. I mean, we lived in the same state. Um, and then, you know, years later, we started this podcast, you know. But <laughs> so, uh, but as the years went on, I'd met people closer and and uh it was not uncommon to go into a store and and see one of those guys uh some of them i don't even remember their names anymore uh because i don't even i mean i've been an adult collector now for 20 years so as of this year i mean i started uh, collecting as an adult in 99 early 99 so yeah it's some of those early years i don't i don't they're they're a blur to me now so (laughs) Well, I would say now there's probably more collectors in the toy aisles than there are kids. Like that's been my experience a lot of times is is that you do, you see more adults there than you know you barely even see kids there. Yeah, that's what I kind of notice around my area too. You know, weirdly enough, and this is just a generality, uh, but I don't see kids in the toy department. Like anytime I go to Walmart or Target or anything, Target sometimes. But I generally just don't see kids with their parents in the in the toy aisles. I notice it's gone down a lot because obviously a, a lot of kids are more interested in you know oh I want like uh, Xbox or you know PS4. They're always in the video games. Yeah, you hardly yeah. see them in the toys anymore. Those and kids I'm starting to see that. Those kids and their MLB the shows, man. I just <laughs> <laughs> or, or mad. Hell yeah! <laughs> right. Uh, and will be the show is better. So <laughs> I'm just calling out one particular kid here. <laughs> I should have put that hat on today. My M will be the show. I will be the show hat. But You're yeah, I mean, a- that's, that's my experience too, though, is like with my kids is that, okay, if, it, if it's something cheap or whatever, like a blind box or a pack of cards or whatever it might be, you know, it's like I might pick that up when we go to the store. But, I mean, if we're going to get something that's over 20 bucks, it's like, well, they might as well just get a, a video game instead, like a, a Nintendo Switch game or PlayStation or, you know, whatever it may be. So, I mean, I, I kind of wonder. Or okay. for a cool 25 bucks, you could get a G1 Prime. With the long stacks. Yes. <laughs> But, you know, um, I kind of wonder if, and this is just a side thought, uh, if the rising cost of the figures themselves, you know, uh, not just inflation and material costs, uh, but also to help increase profit in, in a dying toy market. I think, you know, 
toys are just not what kids want anymore. Uh, so, you know, they're relying more and more on the adult people buying these toys uh, for themselves, like us. Um, you know, I mean, you got the Marvel uh, Legends and the, uh, the Black Series and, and all of that stuff uh, for, for other franchises. And then Transformers, you've got like uh, the, the R.I.D. and then you've got the Generation stuff for us. You know, the RIDs for younger kids and you got the rescue bots for even younger kids. Um, you know, it's they, 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 they've they got to get a piece of that pie in an ever shrinking market, I think. Um, that's just a, just a thought, you know, I mean, maybe something I, uh, you guys can talk about. Sometime. I think part of it is, is how uh, kids and, and all of us consume media now. So, you know, back in the day, you would get home and every day you would have, you know, whatever, DuckTales on or just whatever it might be. Some some kind of cartoon on that you were watching when you were a kid, right? Well, like, that's not, that doesn't exist anymore. I mean, you could put on whatever your favorite cartoon is. But, you know, I think all of us, like, we're probably binging Netflix and my kids do the same thing. Or they're getting on YouTube. And so I, I feel like that, you know, as Anna had talked about um, last year, the parasocial relationships that you have with these, um, you know, with these characters or whatever, I just don't, they're not in your lives day in and day out unless you like absolutely love them and adore them and, and all that. And so I think that that is part of, of what it is, is that, you know, kids will get into something for a little bit, you know, and it might be a few months or something. And then they're like, okay, I'm on to, you know, this is Pokemon. Now I'm on to, you know, whatever, something else. Ryan has a, com- uh, has a, uh, uh, comment that kind of, uh, kind of makes me wonder if that's, I mean, uh, not being a parent. Yeah. Not my, uh, not that I'm a parent or anything. Cause I'm not, but, uh, physical toys are seen as punishment toys by kids that they have to use whenever they aren't allowed to use electronic devices. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I, I, I didn't have that when I was a kid, electronic devices weren't an option. It was Obviously. either play, uh, go out go play outside or play with your toys inside. You know, or go outside and play with your toys. Uh, you know, yeah, yeah, go outside and play with sticks. One or the other, yeah, bang them together. Uh, I, I like the meme that I saw on Facebook the other day. Um, uh, kids these days ask their parents, "What was it like be, uh, to grow up and uh, b- before the internet?" It's like, well, I turned off the internet and turned off the television and turned off the uh, uh, the Wi-Fi and. <laughs> And said, go play outside. And they figured it out real quick. Ryan followed up this comment, said he bought his nephew Lego Star Wars last year and he cried like he spanked him. <laughs> wow. Wow. Huh. And uh, that, that scares me about the future of our our hobby, you know, because if there's not younger fans to, con- uh, to, to love this brand and love this hobby, uh, where's it going to be in another 20, 30 years? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. You know, uh, more shoulders. yeah. And I, mean, I know, I know the there's SDCC a lot of, with, with all the SDCC reveals, you know, we could easily spend upwards of $2,000 if you're into Marvel legends and transformers. It seems like they're really playing to the older audience now. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's one of those things where I'm, I'm afraid that if we don't, I, I know there are certain collectors that, that will, uh, that raise that have kids and they're raising their kids and and some of their kids are even growing to love Transformers some of them not uh, but they're they're growing to love other franchises um, but I I fear for our hobby in another 20 30 years whenever those kids are young adults uh, and getting to the uh, to the age where they can have that expendable income uh, to buy toys. That, that are related to the franchises they love. Will Transformers be one of them? And I think that Transformers as a whole has not done a great job of making a long-lasting um, impact on today's young generation. They made an impact on us, but how did they do that? Through viral social media of the time, television, uh, and a cartoon that was addicting for us. You know, uh, we love the cartoons. We we love the comic books. Um, it was ever present. 
Now they are uh, the market and the environment is so different uh, that they they're they're competing with so much. Uh, you, you know the the TV shows have got to be great. The comic books have got to be great, and you know we, we got to say that the IDW comics um, did a great job. But now, I, you know, this new run that they've got, I'm not so sure. You know, I'm I'm five episodes or not five episodes, five issues in. I've got like four more ish- issues laying on my nightstand over, over here. I haven't even cracked open yet. And I'm bored to tears in the first five issues. And it's it, it, it worries me. You know, they're not making a brand that people are talking about uh, anymore uh, outside of us as older people. And, you know, that's kind of where I think that this discussion is going to lead is as we get older, how have we interacted with other fans and what has continued us to keep coming back and what continues to make us uh, keep us fans? So so, so I was going to say one thing and not to veer too much off topic with with this, but the um, I, I do think. Um, that Transformers will last. And the reason is, is just because of the core idea of, of robots, um, I, I think is something that appeals to, you know, kids. And it doesn't necessarily have to be toys. It could be media. It could be, you know, kind of the mech robots, like with card games and with, um, uh, you know, with video games and, and all those types of things too. And so, and I think the other thing with Transformers that's been a little bit different is, is that there's been different iterations of Transformers. So it doesn't have to stay, it doesn't have to be G1. It could be Beast Wars. It could be, you know, yeah, the movies, uh, the Transformers. Or a con- yeah. to- complete and total reboot, you know. Right. But... And, and so I, that's where I think that even if like we, you know, say it's 10 years from now and all this G1 stuff dies off, like, I think that they'll reboot it and, you know, Hasbro will do, uh, you know, something else and something new. And I think the other thing is, is with Hasbro, like, the, I wish that they had a better cartoon out. But I think otherwise, I think that they're actually doing a lot of different things to try to to try out different things. So, like, the Bot Bots are a good example of, like, some of those blind bag little uh, kids toys. The Transformers trading card game is something that they're, you know, trying out, too. And so I, I do think that they are they are at least trying to shift a little bit with the market. Now, how successful that's going to be, who knows? Um, but, um, but, but yeah, so I, I do think that it will still be around even after, you know, some of the other stuff ends up dying off. Yeah. Cyberverse is not the greatest, but it is not. <laughs> no. Um, but you know, interaction, interacting with other fans, throughout the years, you know, we talked a little bit about, you know, walking into toy stores and meeting fans, getting online. What was your guys' first experiences interacting with other fans online? Was, was it, was it great? Was it not so great? Was it just weird? How how was your interactions, Jack? You're probably, uh, you're, you're easily the youngest of the group. How was your interactions with us? I'll let somebody else go first because I'm still trying to remember how it went. Oh, it was so many years ago. It's so, it it was seven, but I can't. uh, I've had so much happen in seven years, I can't think of it. Oh, only seven years. So less than a decade. Okay. <laughs> Wait till you're approaching almost three decades. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jim. Yes. Yes. Hi. Hi. So You look like you're uh, about to fall asleep. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just listening. Um, no, uh, a few of my thoughts on this is, uh, as, as far as the brand as a whole, I don't think it's going to be around in 30 years in the same way that it has been for the past 35. Uh, much like this episode's title, you know, it's, it's referring to change. And uh, I've said this before, you know, the, the brand, the, 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 the entire premise of Transformers is change. Whether it be from one series to another, one faction to, to the opposite faction, switching sides, whether it be... Uh, vehicle mode, robot mode, to you know, hamster or whatever, you know, any number of things. Um, but uh, you know, media, you know, like, like you guys discussed the the series, the comics, all that. Um, you know, th- those have been important in various intervals. Uh, sometimes uh, more, some more so than others. 
Um, but I think the the whole landscape has, has shifted with, with the advent of technology um, as, as it's developed over the past you know, 30 years. Because, you know, those of us that grew up with, with Generation 1, Generation 2, Beast Wars, whatever, you know, uh, we we were around in the in the earlier days. Uh, you know, we would we would uh, get on Windows ninety five and open up Netscape Navigator, go to Alta Vista or Dogpile Lycos, and you know look up you know some of the earliest earliest Transformer pages. You know, uh, very first one I remember looking up. Uh, All about Transformers. Time. No, uh, my very first time on the internet. I, I'd never been on the internet before, and what do I do? I look up Transformers. There was a website, and I have not been able to find it on any internet archive. It's probably gone to the to the depths of antiquity by now. It was uh, it was not TFW. It was TFFW. Transformers fans of the world dot com. Hmm. Never X. heard of it. It was mostly just like image gallery and profiles and box art stuff like that. Just, just various. Uh, Various things about you know uh, Generation One. Uh, there was there was like d- different GeoCities pages. Uh, GeoCities, yeah. Uh, how, however you pronounce it, GeoCities, GeoCities, GeoCities. Um, you know, uh, there was one that was, that was like blue, like, like I think it was like Blue Fox's tribute to Optimus Prime, and it had the the Vince DiCola score playing in the background uh, with, with with the little the little. Uh, GIFs jumping around the screen and all that, you know, the images flipping around, uh, symbols, you know. Um, but that, that that's kind of what it was like uh, when we were first, you know, starting out as far as uh, as far as the fandom on the internet. Uh, there were, uh, uh, well, what, what what you just said, drawn. That was a uh, just said a minute ago. What was it? drawing a blank here? Um, anyway. Uh, follow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It Even was, it, it was it was pretty TFW. Uh, but anyway, as as time went on, there there were there were like the there were the Yahoo groups. There was the different message boards like TFW. Uh, I don't know, yeah. Big Bot. Uh, what's some other Sabertron? Uh, eventually, Trans Fandom. I mean, and it's progressed over the years. Well, Trans Fandom now, became became uh, TFW, right, so. right. So. <laughs> well, different domain different domain name, but. The point is, it's progressed now to where we have uh, now the advent of social media with things like Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, I keep wanting to say Lycos. Why do I keep wanting to say Lycos? What is wrong with my brain? <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, where, where we have you know uh, groups such as such as our own uh, group there on Facebook. You know, we have our Twitter feed for the podcast. We, heck, we have the podcast, YouTube. You know, so... That is worlds away from what it was, heck, twenty years ago, when uh, you know when some of the earlier sites were, were just beginning. Some of the message awards were just starting up. Uh, it's an entirely different ball game. Uh, so 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 many different ways to interact with one another and discuss the brand, discuss the topic, the hobby, uh, to be able to uh, get together for conventions. Uh, th- things just like yesterday, there was a, a convention in Mexico. Uh, where they they live streamed the, the panel and revealed uh, like the, the studio series the RC triplet bikes uh, studio series Soundwave you know uh, things such as that you could you couldn't have done that 20 years ago back, back when, uh, when when 3H Enterprises was still running uh, Botcon you know you might get some some photos here and there people would scan the, the Polaroids onto their flatbed scanner and upload them to TFW or whatever. You know, but we're 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 watching stuff as it's revealed now, and that that just blows my mind. And whose chair is farting? That's probably mine. Oh, <laughs> it's, it's the twenty buck Goodwill chair. Well, I thought it was funny the uh, TFCon this year. Um, you know, uh, Toronto. I was watching the uh, the live stream. You know, right? And and right after uh, we got done. Or right after they got done with the panel, I, I messaged the the guy who put the panel on and said, "Hey, great job with the panel." And he's like, "Wait, what?" And I was like, "Yeah, man, I was just watching the live stream." 
you know, that uh, <laughs> uh, for the thing. So it's it's much much different now than it's like you can watch it in real time. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. I don't ha- I don't actually have to go to the convention, but I mean it's a much better experience, you know, watching it live. But for you know, if you can't make it up to Toronto, then you know, hey, what are you gonna do? Absolutely. You know, I mean, I remember, uh, you know, I'll. I'll I lurked on the alt trans uh, alt transformers board, you know, read, it, it read it a lot. That's what it was. Yeah. Uh, I lurked on that a lot. Um, and that's where I saw a lot of today's faces, uh, or today's names that I, I eventually would know their faces and know them, uh, know them personally. Um, but I really started my interaction with people, uh, on, uh, bot talk. Uh, on the, and uh, which is still going today, um, but then I went on over uh, to Trans Fans, uh, which you know at the time it was ran by a guy that was uh, from Canada. Uh, he yeah. basically got out of uh, collecting and it was taken over uh, by a group from the UK. And I don't I don't even know if that site's still running or not. Uh, I'm that was my first experience at being a moderator on one of the message boards. Um, and you know, I just, uh, it just went on from there. Uh, and, and then I found TFW and all the years that I've been there, I, I, the other day, I, uh, I was looking at my badge and I'm wanting to say it, it was over, it was well over 10 years. I've been a member of that board, you know, and I'm like, it just doesn't seem like that long. It doesn't seem like that long. It might even be 15 now. I don't. I don't even uh, know. But I, I can't. I can't fathom what my life would be like today had I not met the people through these message boards and then eventually at conventions. Um, and that's another thing I want to I want us to parlay into is is meeting people for the first time at conventions and, and connecting with people on a one-on-one basis, you know, uh, not just, you know, via this thing right here, you know? Uh, so, uh, but meeting people on message boards, uh, was, was totally new to me. I know it's totally new to a lot of people because, uh, you know, I'd always met people organically, you know, you just go into a store and, you know, meet them. And then you finally meet people that think a lot like you do collect what you uh, collect, uh, or after the same things that you are, you're after. And then you go to the shows and you meet these people and you're like, wow, you know, I, I never knew this, uh, that these people were as, as widespread as it once were at one time I was so, so naive back in the early two thousands. I thought I was the only person in trans uh, uh, that collected transformers that remembered transformers in the state of Kentucky until mm-hmm. I got on the message boards. I'm like, I'm like, Oh man, you know, who remembers those toys? Who remembers those? And then, uh, and then the internet, you know, the internet, and that is the number one game changer of all time you know, with Transformers, um, well, you know, interacting with fans. I, I was going to say, for me, I know I l- was a lurker for the longest time. Like, I don't think mm-hmm. that I inter- actually interacted online where, you know, I was giving my thoughts to other people for, I mean, it was probably years. And um, so I would go on and I'd go on TFW, but I would, just, I would be reading other people's comments um, and then I would, uh, a lot of blogs. So, um, I know that, um, you know, Bryce, uh, Rutledge, his, the blog that he has, and he has a fantastic, uh, you know, catalog of, of pictures that he's taken over the years and, uh, you know, some different blogs, uh, like that. And so it was really for me, uh, my, where I started getting, uh, into it was, is that I went to, uh, to planet comic-con in Kansas city and uh, the uh, uh, the gentleman that runs TF Expo actually uh, he had a booth at Planet Comic Con and they had a huge banner that says you know Kansas City Transformers fans like you know join our site TF Expo and all that and I'm like oh what what is all this you know and he's like oh we've well, got this Facebook group you know you should you should join it and then Sean was there too and uh, you know so I met I actually 
kind of had a different experience to where I like met a lot of these people that I first started interacting with online face to face. Um, and then, and they were kind of the ones that encouraged me to, Hey, go on to the groups. And it was the same way too, where it's like, I started, I was, you know, kind of going to TF Expo and interacting with my local Facebook group. And uh, one of the other local guys, uh, Marco, was like, you know, I was like, oh, man, like, where do I sell this stuff at? Like, you know, it's like I don't really like dealing with eBay and whatever. And he's like, oh, well, you should join. They've got all these Facebook groups or whatever where you can sell stuff. It's like this, you know, Cybertron Cafe and, you know, Transformers Chat Trade by, you know. And so then I, you know, so it's kind of for me, it's been kind of a progression to where um, that that I actually met them face to face first. So. And I don't know, Sean, for you, how, how it was like, did you, did you meet people like a lot of the local people first or did you meet them online? Um, yeah, mine, mine was totally different than yours. Like we, I think we both got it back into it about the same time. Like Transformers Prime was on TV. So I was watching that, went to the store, found the toys, um, looked on YouTube Found a couple of reviewers. Then I went. Then I, you know, searched online for these and found like TFW and Sabertron and went on the message boards. Read, you know, read about different Transformers and scrolled the news all day every day. And there was news popping up all the time. Yeah. And uh, and then I, uh, you know, slowly started searching Facebook for Transformers and added groups and. Pretty much, I just relegate my uh, any any Transformers stuff to Facebook. I really don't. I ne- haven't been on forums for years, and um, I rarely look for news on the sites because usually the sites are on your Facebook feed anyway. So mm-hmm. yeah, you know, that, that, pretty much that that's that's something with me. You know, for years I was so dominant uh, with my my new the news that I uh, that I ingested, the interaction that I had with fans. Uh, and and other uh, not just not fans of the show but fans of Transformers uh, the interactions with fans um, like me it was all on message boards um, but I would say in the last probably eight to ten years social media has slowly taken that over to where I rarely go to a message board anymore if mm-hmm. I do it's just to post pictures and the uh, the react uh, you know I, I know that they're still active and TFW quite frankly yeah. is probably one of the most active message boards yeah. out there if not the most active uh, but I just don't frequent them anymore because a lot of the discussions and the and the reason is is because a lot of the discussions that happen on the message board boards are cyclical in that they um you know you'll have people talking about something it'll it'll die off and everything and then a few years later the topic will come back up and it's all new to, uh, to a whole whole new group of people and they start talking about stuff it's like the uh, rib fear fear rib you know rumble, rumble is blue frenzy is red you know um sound wave yeah you know people people uh, talk about that and how many times have you seen the, oh, here's this thread again, you know, or here's this talk again, you know, if you've been around long enough, you've yeah. seen it and it just gets to be what, like, well, I don't want to talk about that anymore. Let's talk about something fresh and new. Um, you know, yet here we are in a very nostalgia driven uh, franchise because a lot of the characters and, and everything that we that we know and love we want new characters of new versions of that we get tired of the same old talk it's weird it's weird uh, but I just don't go to message boards hardly anymore it's all it's all, almost all Facebook uh, mm-hmm. occasionally I go to Twitter um, and once in a blue moon Instagram uh, but I, I just don't uh, don't do that. Uh, I'll, uh, I do take in the uh, the occasional reviewer on YouTube. I watch uh, some uh, podcasts on YouTube, like this one. Um, Obviously, okay. yeah. But but I mean, it's <laughs> it's just to the point now where my interaction with fans uh, is either in person or through social media, and it's weird because you've gone from a where, where uh, does everybody remember whenever you went to the shows 
people would call you by your screen name. Oh, yeah, hey, Weird Wolf, Weird Wolf. Now, through social media, people are knowing your real name, and they're calling you by your real name. And screen names are dying now. You know, uh, Now, there are certain people that still maintain their screen name on social media. Uh, but, um, but, yeah, I mean, for the most part, it's, it's like people starting to recognize me for, as Duran Land, not Weird Wolf. Um, and, and that's changing. Uh, well, well, one of the things I, I started actually getting more active just in general and contributing more because I actually realized, like, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of a crazy person and I'm constantly on TFW and I'm constantly on Facebook with Transformers. Like, it's a big chunk of my, you know, uh, of what I do with my uh, time, um, you know, outside of, you know, actual responsibilities and all that. And I, I realized that most people aren't, right? So, like, most people are not, you know, keeping up with things the same way that I am. Or, like you, Duran, where you're like, you're only on Facebook. So, if something's on TFW, you didn't, you didn't see it. So, yeah. like, so I started doing, and I know, like, Dane Chalk does a fantastic job of this. But he will post stuff from TFW onto Facebook and vice versa. And or like on the Asian sites or, or whatever. And so that's where I started, you know, kind of getting uh, involved with that or like there's always new fans that are coming in. And so the stuff like, you know, like TF Wiki or TFU.info or just whatever or, you know, different podcasts and whatever, like all these people really? don't know about this stuff. Well, right? it's, and that's one of the things like uh, through through uh, through our website, TFTalk.net. Uh, we started to share news from all of those outlets. You know, it's like we, we just share it uh, and give one central place for people to go. Uh, if, uh, you know, on, on Facebook or uh, or a website, it's like, okay, you get news from TFW, from Sabertron, from uh, Unicron. You, uh, you, you get all of these all of these outlets because, quite frankly, everybody's reporting the same news. It's just who yeah. gets it first. But who re really, who cares who gets it first, just as long as it's shared? I like a central place to go, and if it pops up in my news feed, then that's where I, uh, where I see it. I don't care where it came from. I just want to see the news. Okay. You know, Read um, the article. Figure out yeah. all the information you possibly can, and you're good. Yeah. Click here. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I see what you mean, and 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 – it's changed in that aspect too. I remember many, many years, you know, from, you know, through 2000, from 2005 all the way up through the early 2010s. Um, you know, I would go to TFW and go to the front page and, and I'd scroll sometimes two or three pages just, uh, just to catch in all the news. And that was weekly, you know, now it's getting to be almost daily uh, with third party stuff. You know, you yeah. get third party official, you know, Comic Con and some Asian convention, some Canadian show, some European show, some Australian show. You know, they, they release a little bit each and every show. And it seems like every month there's some little new tidbit we're getting now. Um, but even yeah. some of the stuff, too, where it's like, say something goes live, like the. Um, all the SDCC uh, exclusives, you know, like they all went live and it's like, oh, bam. And so it's like, you know, I, like we're texting each other or messaging each other to say, hey, like, check it out. Like, it, you know, it's it's live up on Walmart now. It's live up on like whatever. And like I know that, um, uh, for example, like I, I shared the um, – the target exclusives, like what was it a week ago with the Rainmakers and that uh, Target Master, the uh, Minicon 10 pack, right? Well, if mm -hmm. you didn't get that yeah. right then, it, it sold, it sold, yeah, the MicroMaster one, um, <laughs> it, it sold out in two hours. So it's wow. like if you're not right on, uh, you know, and I'm sure, I'm sure with those target exclusives, they'll more than likely probably be in stock later on, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, well, I it's saw like the, the Rainmakers yesterday. I think a lot of people's hesitant on those. I am. It's like eighty bucks mm -hmm. for basically bubble gum yeah. Uh, yeah. colored seekers. I, I, I got Skywar pre-ordered, and I want to get Thundercracker, and I'll be happy with those. Get yeah. the three, you know. And if they the do Ramjet, three is, yeah, yeah. If they do Ramjet Thrust and Dirge, maybe. Uh, but I'm, you know, the 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 one-offs that appeared in the show. Yes, they're the Tetrajets, but. 
do I really need these eyesores? No. <laughs> yeah, Keep it in I the mean, box I was, for... Oh, hmm. sorry. Go ahead. I, I was going to say, like, if, if I was going to pick one, the, um, the MicroMaster 10-packs are a lot cooler. Like, they have new molds in there. Um, and, do they? Or no. Yeah, I, I thought they, they were just straight up repaint. There's two, yeah. there's two new molds, the yeah, semi-truck and the yeah. Jeep, or the SUV. Yeah, so they have a couple new molds, two. and then the, and then they do have nice. several of the repaints. So I mean, I feel like that that's the set to get if you want to get a you know MicroMaster collection. It's like pick that up; it's forty bucks. There you go. Yeah, I, I wanted to get it, but I'm I, I, I held off on it. I mean, I'm sure it'll come back in stock eventually, but oh, yeah. um, clearing track for fifteen, maybe sometime right. down the road. Sorry. I'm I'm only going to pick it up for airways. I was really, really hoping that they would do like, uh, like if they did this Macro, MicroMaster 10 pack, and and we're getting sidetracked here, by the way. But, yeah. But uh, I wanted uh, out of the MicroMaster 10 pack, I wanted them to complete the sets that, that we already have. Uh, but they didn't. You know, they just like, oh, here's even more characters, but you don't get the whole sets. You know. Yep. Uh, you know that's one of those things where Hasbro just. It's like they, they go almost there, almost there, and then just stop. I, I have a you thought know, on that. Giggity. Yeah. I, I, I have a thought on that. <laughs> um, with, the, with the reveals and everything that we've seen these past couple of months, we've pretty much seen, I, I would wager, probably the, through the end wave of uh, Siege. And we know nothing about the next chapter in the War for Cybertron trilogy. And I just I suspect that Fall of Cybertron. Co- co- close got, enough. Got the joke. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I, I suspect that the companion uh, MicroMasters uh, to complete those squads are going to be in either the second arc or the third arc of this trilogy. Because we're not done getting Titan class figures. There's no way. I mean, Unicron aside. I almost going to guarantee we're, we're going to get a Scorpion off here in the next three years uh-huh. uh, in, in one of those two arcs. Uh, the, speaking of arcs, the fact that they have paired on, on Cyberverse the arc with Optimus, I'm wondering if we're about to get the arc of the Nemesis as Titan class in some form. Could be. It, it would make that, sense. That might be a given, well, well, given It's hard the, to say. Given the fact they have MicroMasters and, and that play pattern with the, with the bases and the Titan classes... And the subject matter of these lines, it's it's the uh, departure, the, the trek from Cybertron to, you know, onto the Great War. I think if they were it, going it to do sense. the arc, I think if they were going to do the arc, they would have probably have done something with Omega Supreme and turned him into the arc or something okay. like that. But... I'm disappointed they didn't because that would have been great. It's I'm not cool. disappointed because I, I mean, love the one that we're getting. <laughs> well, sure, yeah. I, I do too. But I also wanted to get like the animated one. That would have been a beautiful thing. Yeah, uh, but moving moving back to our our topic of discussion, uh, uh, Ron on uh, YouTube says I found Facebook uh, buy sell trade uh, social groups helpful building communities. Uh, I've had great interaction with people in these groups mm-hmm. and I have too. I mean, uh, and, and that's another outlet of, uh, of fandoms is for many, many years, our only way to buy, sell and trade or well, buy and sell uh, transformers was through you or you know, YouTube, but, but through eBay uh, and eBay is just becoming, it's, it's okay. harder and harder. It, it is a pain. Um, and now you can you go to these Facebook groups and there's so many different ways, uh, places to sell uh, uh, things. Yeah, um, you don't really have to worry about fees or you know. Yeah, I mean you're just an individual seller and 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 have at it. Um, plus, you also have the benefit of knowing the person you know, getting to know the person that you're uh, buying and selling with. You know, um, whereas on eBay, it's it's generally faceless. You know. It's, this person bought this toy. Let me send it to them. Um, and a lot of times, you know, you put something up for sale. I don't know how many times somebody that I knew personally. So, oh, hey, I want that. I'll buy that. Yeah. You know, um, you know, uh, right Jack's, Jack's done it from me. Jim's done it. I think he, everybody here has probably done it from one another, uh, one of each one of us at one time or another. Um, 
then you got, you know, if you're selling on eBay, you don't know <laughs> how long it's going to be listed or when it's going to sell. And it could just, you know, be like, oh, you know, had it for sale for a month or two months now. And it's like you can't sell it on eBay. And you're like, yeah, screw it. I'll take it down and put it on Facebook. Yeah. There you go. I mean, uh, the, the guy that bought my stepper uh, here the other day, um, he actually, I've actually met him before uh, at a meetup uh, up in Indianapolis. Um, but I can't, I can't remember his name right off the top of my head. I met him like one time and he is actually a friend of an, a, a mutual friend of mine. Uh, so it's like, it's, I kind of feel that this went to a, to somebody I knew and I knew, I know it went to a good home, you know, somebody that knows, Hey, what, this is what this is. Um, so that's, that's another way that, the, that our interaction with, uh, fans and this hobby has changed uh, is the, ad- the addition of the buy sell trade groups. Uh, I think it's a wonderful, wonderful thing that that has happened. Well, I, I think it's just a, a great thing that when you can sell something to someone and and drawn for like example that stepper right like I'm sure <coughs> you didn't want to sell it, but no, the guy that you sold it to has probably been looking for a good quality stepper for like years or something, right? Mm-hmm. And that you probably made his weekend that he actually got it. And like, I've had that experience myself where, you know, some of this stuff, it's like, okay, like maybe it's a third party figure. Maybe it's just whatever. And I, you know, I decided to sell it cause it's, it's just been sitting around and someone is so excited to get that thing. And then you see them, like they might put, post it online and say, um, this just happened my, with my to- toy world devastator. Like I sold that. And the, the guy that bought it would like post the pictures online. Like I, I finally got a toy world devastator. Like this looks great. And so like, that's the thing I think is, it's cool is, is that, um, you know, because I, I personally consider myself a toy fosterer. And so when I can make someone's day, uh, to, uh, to, to pass that along to them, I, I think is a cool thing. And you know, what's great about that is that, the toy that you owned, you can still get enjoyment out of it by uh, by seeing somebody else enjoy that same toy. Uh, you know, I've seen that happen so many times uh, with 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 figures I've done. Well, that was like TFCon 2014 when it was in Chicago. I went with the intent of getting a Classics Prime because I always wanted that toy. It was one toy that has been haunting me for years that I didn't get, and then when I finally got it, I'm like, okay, I need a good Voyager. Mega's trying to go with him. Then enters Sergio, another cast member of ours, and he goes, yeah, by the way, I have this for, you know, Classics Megatron, you know, the Nerf gun. He goes, hey, I have it for sale for 25 bucks. You want it? I go, oh, sure. <laughs> Thank you. It's Nerf or nothing. Yeah. And, and, and But you bought it from somebody that you now know, you know. And and how many times have you bought from some uh, somebody and went on and and got to know them even better through a sales interaction. I don't have a, a specific person that I uh, that I know that I've done that with, but I know people who have. And that it's just great that this is a good change uh, for our fandom. Um, but you know, there there are bad changes uh, that that come along with uh, with changes in the fandom. And and what what ways can you guys think? that uh that is negative changes in in the way we interact with people Mm. don't everybody jump out well i I think in in general i think all this social media interaction uh in general especially if you don't meet them you don't know them personally it it can tend to go uh negative any time that you have a viewpoint that is different than someone else and so you'll see that where people will argue online or just have, you know, um, pissing contests essentially about like, well, I think this is better and I think this is better and all that. And so I think that in general, it social media can lend itself, you know, that way. And I think that we have to be careful of how you present yourself. Um, you know, because you can, it it can get negative, uh, real quick if you don't watch it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) <laughs> Rob says, I have no idea what you guys are talking about. Buying figures from people you know? Weird. 
<laughs> goes back to sorting Lucas's old Marvel Legends. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, didn't, didn't you just open a box of Marvel Legends for me? Uh, <laughs> oh, that is great. <laughs> um, well, here's here's one for me, and I want to preface this by, that by saying, if you are a, a friend of mine on my so, my personal social media, uh, don't take offense to this because uh, because if you're still one of my friends, then uh, you know there's some interaction with you that I've had that I've enjoyed, and I and I keep you around. But here's a negative for me, and this is me uh, just as a uh, as a podcaster. I don't know how many times, uh, you know, that fans of the show uh, want to friend, uh, befriend me, and then they'll start commenting on me and making really weird comments on my personal posts or my personal photos and everything. It's like, I don't even know this person. Who are you? Mm-hmm. You know? And Or they will start messaging me out of the blue about stuff, you know, uh, in, the, uh, in the hobby, in the fandom, as if I as if I'd known them for years. Yeah. I find that a bit weird and disturbing. I had that when I had my YouTube channel. I mean, I still do obviously because I'm commenting with it on the live feed, but um there's been a few times to where I had like cuz I did my own Google Hangouts, so I kind of did my own shows before I obviously ended that and so I always had a few people comment with like Durant said some of the weirdest stuff to where they th- they think they know you. And there was even a couple videos to where people started attacking me for stuff I didn't even do. Or it was somebody else had trouble with some other. I'd kind of like defend them saying, you know, they're not such a bad person. I'll be like, oh, you're the you know worst person on the planet. You need to shut up. You know, it's just weird. It's like, I don't even know you. What the hell is going on? <laughs> Well, I mean, and I'm not saying this to be, you know, a, a downer or anything, because in, in recent years, I've gotten better. You know, if generally if like I see you as like a as a regular poster or a regular commenter uh, in in one of our in our TFYLB Facebook group uh, or you comment on the videos and, and show that you're interacting with us. It's not like I don't know you, you know, and but people that. I have had no interaction with whatsoever. I've seen no posts with, and then they'll send me a friend request. Uh, at one time I would, I would just accept it. You know, it's okay. Uh, yeah, they're a Transformers fan. I'll accept it, you know, and then you, uh, you know, I'll post something. I think the one thing that was like the, the straw that broke the camel's back was several years ago. Um, I was going through a, uh, a separation with my ex-wife and I was, uh, I made the mistake of posting a very personal uh, pain on Facebook regarding that. And this this person came on there and basically laughed at me and and was saying, oh, just get over it. You know, it's a woman or something. And I'm like, dude, I don't even know you and you don't even know me. How dare you come onto my personal page? You know, and and I got to be more selective after that point mm-hmm. um you know there are people uh that that are uh, that are friends now that I, I haven't necessarily met in person but i've seen them comment on uh, on things that we've done you know and they and and they show that they're generally interested in things that i do uh like this podcast you know and so and i've met great people and and I'll, I'll, I'll point her out, Carrie. You know, she has been a massive, uh, great support for this show, and I consider her a good friend, even though I only get to see her at cons once in a while. But she is, uh, she's a fantastic person, you know. And I didn't know her until this show, and she started uh, interacting with this show. And you do meet great people that way, uh, but there is a wrong way to go about it, and some there's some people that do that. <laughs> So, so one, one thing I will touch on that, drawn because I, I feel like that for the longest time, I've kind of been on the other side of that coin uh, myself to where, you know, there there's certain people that are spending every week with us and that they get to know us because there are certain, you know, tidbits that you share online or on the show or whatever. Uh, and, and so then people feel like that they know you. And so... You know, I felt that way about, you know, some of the YouTube reviewers that I've met. And so it's almost weird because I know all this information about them, but they don't they know, nothing about know you. Yeah. anything about me. And so it's almost like, like sometimes I'll 
you know, say, for example, like talk to them in a convention or whatever, and I might bring something up that it was uh, that they had said on a particular podcast, a particular review or, or whatever. Um, or, you know, I love to do that with the guys from Shattered Cast or whatever and kind of talk with, with that. Um, and, um, you know, one of the things I love now is, is, um, my, my favorite thing is, is like, since Don is on RFC and on our show, both right. Is I love watching their show first or his Twitter feed. Right. And then coming Mm -hmm. on here and then saying, no, Don, you're wrong because of this, like whatever it might be. Um, and, (laughs) and so, uh, and, and give my opinion. Um, but yeah. I, I do think that there's a, a lot of that type of thing to where, um, you know, again, that, that parasocial relationship uh, that I think certain people have to where you might be a lurker, but they feel like that they, you know, that they know us or know you or, or you know, whatever. So um, well, it definitely and- is odd, though. I, I, did, I, I 100% agree with you. And it's weird if you're posting something non-Transformers. Or, or whatever, and then they're posting on their, you know, they're liking your kids' stuff or commenting on a, a post that you make about, you know, your family or something like that, and you're like, uh, yeah, yeah, you don't really know any of these people. Yeah. Well, I mean, and, and like I said, it's not all negative. I mean, there has been some great interactions and and, and great comments that uh, that uh, from fans of the show and 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 the hobby that uh, that I've befriended that. You know that that really helped me out, and I've met some really really great people uh, through this hobby, through this show, uh, and I wouldn't trade it for anything. Um, but you know, there are once in a while those people out there that just I, I don't know if it's just social awkwardness or what, but they don't know that the uh, there are boundaries out there. Uh-huh. Uh, now, if now you did bring up something uh, that 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 is kind of a tangent on this and that's interacting, uh, with, um, other content providers like YouTube reviewers, um, you know, and, and being a content provider ourselves, it's almost, if they view our content and we view their content, it's a mutual, we, even though we hadn't met, you kind of, you kind of still know the other person a little bit. You're, you're familiar with that person. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Bobby Skullface was, uh, was one of those, uh, those people, you know, I I walked up and spoke to him, uh, at TF, uh, con last year, year before last. I mean, I, one of those years. Um, but, uh, you know, he had seen a few episodes of TFYLP knew who I was. I knew who he was, you know, so we had this common ground. Um, so it's not like I was just some Joe Blow walking up and saying, Oh, Hey, you know, you're great. I love your sit down Saturdays. And, you know, and, and you know, it's like, uh, you said this on this show and, uh, you know, it's like his recent sit down about Zeta toys. It starts off talking to one of his kids, scolding one of his kids at the beginning of one of his <laughs> videos. And I'm sure that some weird weirdo is going to walk up and say something to him about that. And it's like, Whoa, to me, I would find that really weird, you know, but Again, you know, I mean, maybe he might perceive it completely different. Uh, I don't know. But I, think I remember Sean, uh, you, you and I didn't didn't we do that to Bobby? And, uh, and don't don't bring me into this. That was <laughs> oh, you. he just like, did. You like he just did. You're like you're like hey, Bobby Skullface, uh, don't give Matt such a hard time about Hasbro because Hasbro's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, "Oh, here we go." You bet. You made him sound like a wimp, dude. <laughs> yeah, that, that I mean, yo, time. Bobby Skullface, uh, quit, quit talking shit to Matt, or else, or else something's gonna happen to you. Or that else, was awesome. <laughs> or else, or else. But I mean, you know, I, I will say though, I mean, it's not all negative. I just wanted to point out that there is a negative aspect uh, to. Uh, the social media, and especially whenever you uh, you you throw in Facebook and and things where you post your own personal things on there, not related to the hobby whatsoever, and then you have this mix of people that's from the hobby coming in that you don't know, they're knowing things about your personal life. I, you know, I've got to the point now where I I mainly just share memes. I'm I'm a Sergio again. I'm, I, I share memes and things that I like, 
if you don't like uh, like those things, don't follow me. You know, mm-hmm. uh, I, I try not to put as much per- personal stuff on there. Once in a while, I will, but you know, it, and it's for that reason. You know, uh, there there it, there there's a line out there. You know, I want my personal life to be personal. And there's some people that's went so far as like, okay. This is my uh, my page that I have for my Transformer fans. This is my page for my friends and family. Uh, to me, I think that's a uh, that's a little bit too much work for me, you know. Uh, so I, I'm I'm keeping it all on one page. Uh, but at one point, at some point, eventually, I'm probably going to go through and and filter out a lot of people. Are, okay, I've never met you, never had any any actions with you, uh, you know, unfriend. It, it's not anything personal. It's just I want to keep my my Facebook page personal, uh, and to me that is a negative impact on the hobby migrating from message boards over over to social media. Is that fans? Uh, you know, to me there's a, a circle of personal space, and sometimes you know social media makes that personal space shrink. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Overall, the, the the interaction, the the experience is positive for me. Uh, like I said, I've met so many great people through this hobby, through this show. I wouldn't trade it for anything. I really wouldn't. So, so here here's my uh, question for all of you guys: Is you know we've been talking about the community, the interaction, all that type of thing, and both positive and negative. Would you say that those interactions in the community have extended your fandom? Like, would you be as big of a fan? Would you still be as much of a fan of Transformers now as what you were 10 years ago or whatever it might have been now? And do you think that it will continue your fandom? Or do you think that the fandom or the, the negativity is will lead to you getting out of the fandom quicker than what you would have otherwise. Ooh, ooh, me, me, me. I'll go. <laughs> um, yeah, I've, I've noticed myself um, dwindling further and further from any kind of interaction uh, on the groups for as far as social media, unless it's like the local Kansas City group or the you know you know local guys that i know face to face i mean i don't i used to get on cybertron cafe all the time and talk it's still a good group but it's just so hard to sell things anymore not just that group but groups in general it's uh it's gotten more of a uh there's a lot more of a negative feel among among groups and among all the the pages so once we as fans can you know get over ourselves and get along with each other i think it would you know it'd help the fandom and help the uh the you know just interaction just it would it would help people connect and you know come together among a you know a common interest where we could actually enjoy things together instead of tear each other down and you know tear things apart and this isn't just transformers too i mean I don't no, know. No, it's everything. It's fan, everywhere. Yeah, it's yeah. like every every fandom. Uh, there is a certain level of social media burnout. Everybody experiences mm-hmm. that. Yeah. yeah. So, what about the rest of you, like Jim? I mean, what, what do you think? Well, um, well, huh? well, oh. <laughs> Ronald oh, Reagan, oh. well. Uh. <laughs> No, uh, I've, I've had uh, I've had positive and negative interactions uh, on on message boards on social media. Um, one uh, one one thing that comes to mind uh, last year, uh, I had this uh, negative interaction with uh, a fella in uh, I, think, I think he was in Kansas or Arkansas or something. I can't even remember now. Uh, dude was in one of the one of the collector groups, you know, and was was we were, we were discussing a, a possible trade. You know, I had I had a, a box lot of, of uh, movie items. You know, m- most of them were, were used incomplete, um, but we had reached this arrangement where I would ship out my ends, and in exchange he would 
he would ship his head out, which was which would have been the Power of the Primes uh, Freddy King. And I sent to him what would be roughly equal to about two to two hundred fifty dollars worth of figures, because uh, it one it got them out of my way. It would have been too much of a hassle to find the, the parts and pieces, you know, to to you know to complete all of them. I mean, they, they were they were decent shape, you know, just like mi- missing a missile here or, or a gun there. And so I, I follow up on my end, and then he starts uh, starts tiptoeing around and. Come to find out that uh, he had no intention of fulfilling his end, and found out a little later he's not actually an adult collector at all. He was actually a, I think he was like a fourteen-year-old kid. Uh, on on his profile though, he he was listed as like being like twenty-five or something like that. Oh yeah, they fake him all the time. Uh, yeah, yeah. So complete and total fraud. Never did get my items back. Never did receive the credit king. Uh, I have apparently since been blocked. So if he watches this podcast, um, hi. You know, he knows talking me. about you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Me. But uh, yeah, no, that that was probably the most negative uh, interaction that, that that I've had um, in fandom. Uh, but in hindsight, I wasn't really doing anything with them. They were in a tote in the garage. So I mean, it still got them out of my way. I just. Still kind of myth that I didn't get the Predaking like I had uh, like I'd hoped, but uh, overall, uh, far and away, my interactions have been uh, overwhelmingly uh, positive in, in the fandom. I've uh, gotten to know uh, quite a few people in the fandom uh, on on a more personal level, even though I've never met them in public uh, at all. I've never met them in person. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, some of them I had apparently known on message boards and couldn't find out, you know, like, like you guys said earlier, you know, hey, you're so-and-so. I never pieced the two together that you were that person, you know. Uh, that that but, brings back memories of uh, being in an elevator at BotCon years and years ago. Uh, I, I can't even remember who it was, but uh, somebody that I'd, uh, I had interacted with on one of the message boards for years uh, we're standing on the message board and, uh, and, uh, you know how some of the earlier bot cons, uh, our usernames was right below our real name on her, yeah. on her name badge. Mm-hmm. We're, uh, we're standing there and I was actually talking, I believe my wife was with me at the time and we were standing in, in the, in the elevator talking and the guy that was in the elevator with me, it was with, uh, his wife mm-hmm. and he goes, Oh my God, you're a weird wolf. And I'm like, yeah. And he goes, I'm so-and-so. And I'm like, oh, my God. You know, we stood and we <laughs> went out the elevator and we stood and talked for like 30, 45 minutes just, just talking. Like, nice. and, and my wife was like, who is that person? Oh, I've, I've, ta- I've chatted with him for years. You know, you know, it, that was that was great. That was great. You know, and it goes back to no one on, only everybody's username. And then whatever. Yeah. but you, you had no idea what they look like. Remember when you know you you had this mental vision of what somebody looked like j- uh, based on what they the way they talked online yeah uh, and everything and then you meet them in person you're like not what I envisioned <laughs> that's a full 180 <laughs> that, that, that no. reminds me of uh, that reminds me of one uh, there's a there's a guy I'm, I'm friends with on on Facebook uh, just just another adult collector right guy guy lives over in the UK a guy named Pete. And, you know, I've, I've been friends with him for a couple odd years, you know, and I only just a couple of months ago found out, wait, you're Draven from TFW? You're the same guy? What? No clue. Had no clue. I talked with this guy for years, you know, about different different toys, different things, uh, you know, comments on conventions, uh, new products, whatever. No idea. You know, and it's crazy, uh, and this goes back to, uh, and we're kind of circling back around to how we met certain people. Mm-hmm. I found out like a couple of years ago that a, a guy that's a friend of mine now, uh, we're, he's a local collector, um, comes to local meetups uh, all the time. Uh, I'd seen him on message boards, and I had no idea. I, I didn't even know he lived in Louisville. And... Um, 
uh, I had, I was a friend with him on on message boards, liked some of his stuff. We were friends on Xbox 360 because he uh, would take like Forza games and um, and take the the paint and actually make up cars in the game and make them look like Transformers, you know, like Lamborghini okay. Countach. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, he had he had this really sick. Uh, breakdown deco for uh, for a Lamborghini and one of my uh, I used it for for probably two years as, as my main deco and we were talking the other day and I'm like Chris what was your username and, and he told me and I'm like holy crap I had no idea that was you <laughs> yeah and, and it, it's small world small world and yeah and, and then I brought that up, you know, about the the decos on, on Forza and everything. And he was like, yep, yep, that was me. <laughs> he said I'd spend hours on that stuff. So, so Jax, what, what do you think for you? What Would you say that the social media and the interaction has kind of kept you going? Or would you say that the negative or whatever is kind of causing you to, you know, kind of pull back a little bit? With, it hasn't really been much for negatives, obviously, besides that one video. It kind of brought me down for a few weeks, but I managed to recoup. But uh, no, it's I kind of pulled myself back due to pretty much life happening because I have, you know, obviously college now, have my own job. You know, I can't I haven't really been able to interact as much as what I used to, like, especially when I had when I was fully engaged in YouTube and I was still, you know, doing reviews, doing whatever like the hangouts and posting all my links and, you know, photo galleries. I never really put much effort into anything after that. And that was, I think, June of 2016. So it's been at least three years, I think, since I really fully interacted. And, I mean, I do kind of miss it sometimes. I've been really thinking about in the past year about really kind of rebooting my YouTube channel. But with the way that some YouTube channels are going, it's like some people get, you know, a good number of viewers and subscribers. I kind of got a decent amount, but it's not too much to really, you know, do much with. Um, so I just never really got into, you know, rebooting it. So I'm, it's just never really something I've actually been thinking about, you know, I mean, the only really interaction I really do is obviously this. And I honestly don't mind. You know, I get to talk to, you know, people. Obviously, you know, doing the live feed is fun. That's pretty much it. That's all I've got. So, yeah. So, so I will say the one, the one thing that's really kind of kept me going is, is, um, you know, the, the positive community going to conventions meeting people, meeting some of the just really wonderful people in, in this fandom. And, and I really think that this channel itself has, has really kind of helped keep me going. You know, I found it, Sean introduced me, uh, you know, to it and, and drawn, I met drawn at, at TF Expo as well. And <clears throat> that what this, podcast oh. and what this channel is is all about is kind of the thing that's kept me going because i feel like that you know for the most part it is a positive community it is is something to where we can all interact there's not a bunch of people that are typically arguing or it's you know it may be constructive you know mm -hmm. feedback both and for back and forth but it's not the cesspool that other groups are or that other shows are, that other things are. And so that's that's the thing is, and, and so that's where I, you know, when Drawn asked me to be on the show, uh, you know, a year ago, um, that, that I went ahead and said yes, because I love what this is about. And I thought that I could make a positive contribution to, to the show and to this community at, at large, and that I could help other people out in the fandom with with what they're doing so that that's kind of my my thing and so i'm hoping that that i can continue on uh you know with the uh with the fandom for for myself for for years to come absolutely and on uh any of you guys have any uh closing thoughts on on the topic of discussion i was well, also gonna say i remember one of my favorite moments 
when I was actually, you know, I knew people online for a little bit, but when I actually got to meeting them in real life, I remember it was at 20 or yeah, TFCon Chicago 2014. The first time I met Duran, he goes, Holy shit, you're tall. <laughs> I didn't expect you to be that tall. No. Yeah, he was just leaning up against the wall. He was looking this way. I was walking past. I was in my twins jersey. I'm pretty sure that's how he recognized me is because that's how I, I actually wore that a few times on my channel. So I'm like, okay, you know, if anybody knows me, this is what I'm wearing. If you want to say hi, come up. And he turned his head around. He goes, oh, shit. Hey, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and for the record, you know, uh, everybody's supposed to be sending Headmaster Dawn some Supreme Class Cheetors from now on. <laughs> mail, mail Jack if you if you can get a hold of Jack's address, mail him boxes of Twinkies. Yay! I I, I wouldn't mind that. I mean, I'm <laughs> I wouldn't mind some more munchies for a little bit. So, box uh, no twins Twinkie. Never mind. Yeah, uh, old nickname. Old I'm nickname. the only one who gets that. Yeah. All right, guys, uh, you have any uh, closing thoughts on the uh, topic of discussion? Jim? I, I, I do a little bit. Um, you guys were, uh, were mentioning, you know, meeting people at conventions and stuff, and it uh, <clears throat> it reminded me of uh, probably one of the most positive interactions I've ever had in the fandom. Uh, it was actually, uh, in a roundabout way, how I came to be part of the TFYLP family was my interaction on uh, TFW 2005 with a user named uh, TransJazz. Uh, Chad Williams, to, to those who, who don't remember him. Uh, he was throwing together a, a convention uh, called Psychicon back in 2010. It was the first year. And uh, at, at the time, I was living over in Terre Haute, which, uh, which wasn't too far from the Indianapolis area. And you know, so so over in Terre Haute, there was a, there was a few other collectors, some of whom I I had grown up with, uh, and so you know I, I I sent him a sent him a message and said, hey, you know, do you need help with setup or anything like that? And it just it just kind of went from there. You know, he he had the show for a total of four years, and that that fourth year, um, uh, I had decided to to sell some stuff. I I was a was a dealer as well as helping with setup, and. Uh, I was actually the first time I uh, found out about TFYLP uh, because the podcast was literally right behind me. Uh, if, if you watch the, uh, the TFYLP 2013, uh, 2013 Slagacon episode, uh, you'll actually, in the background, you'll see my booth, my little plastic pillar of mess uh, in, in the background. I was, uh, I, I think I may have walked by the camera a couple of times. I was dressed up as uh, one of the G1 G1 humans uh, with the hard hat and all that, but uh, no, that that. I that think it was the first time that, we had ever in, uh, interviewed uh, John Bailey. Yeah, and uh, we also interviewed uh, Rumble Frenzy or yeah. Frenzy Rumble rather uh, on there. Yeah, we, we, I'm still trying to figure out if he's red or blue. Yeah. <laughs> um, Frenzy is red. Just, Rumble is blue. Blue. Just, there we go. Just, just thinking back, just dropping that one message on the boards, um, you know, just wanting to help out with with a, a an independent convention, and here I am talking to all you guys now, you know. So I mean, the fandom it has its negatives, sure, but by and large, I think overwhelmingly it is a positive thing, and. Uh, I, I, I regret nothing. I'm, I'm glad to be part of the fandom, and I look forward to 30-plus more years of it. No matter what form it takes, whether it's on social media, maybe, maybe they'll bring back Tiger handhelds. I don't know. Anything can happen. Tiger handhelds. Well, on that note, uh, uh, our topic of discussion uh, is closing, but uh, I do have a special announcement that uh, I want to get out there to fans. Um over the last few months, I've been uh, thinking about things, and uh, there's been some things that's been going on in my life that that it's been very difficult for me to deal with. Um, I've decided to uh, 
retire from podcasting. And I'm, uh, I'm, I'm turning over the show to Lucas. I feel that uh, he is going to be able to continue this show for many, many years to come in a very capable way. Uh, he's been covering for me in my stead uh, for the last few weeks, last few months, in a very admirable way. And the cast is is absolutely the best cast that I could have ever asked for. Um, but uh, I want to thank the fans. For the best nine years, this journey that I've been on, thank you for your support. And uh, TFYLP will live on. Thank you all. Thank you, Daron. Thank you. Thank you, Daron, for everything that you've done. Um, and you know, uh, us as a cast that we, we, you know, want to continue what, what you've done, um, and, and this, this journey that you've brought all of us on, um, you know, for, for the last, you know, many, many years that we, we just want to continue and, and, and keep, you know, building and, and, and doing and, and, and all that. So and we, we hope that, we can continue, we, you know, uh, as, as a friend and, you know, honestly, I mean, I think we all consider you family, but, you know, same here, you know, we, we want to, um, you know, um, you know, and any, any time. And, you know, I know I've been, I, I've been trying to talk Duran into not doing this. Um, and, and any time that you want to, you know, uh, to be back on the show and, uh, to, well, with the fandom, I, I, anything. I mean, yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure I'll pop back on from uh, from time to time. Um, but as an active member of the show, uh, and as a man behind the show, um, due to my personal life, uh, personal uh, things that I that I need to take care of, um, I, I just don't have time for the show. And I don't want the show to suffer. I don't want the show to end. And I am so thankful that I've got so many great friends that are willing to carry on this work that I've begun. That, you know, I didn't want it to end. And I'm, I'm, I'm thankful to, for you, Lucas, to to take those reins and, and for, uh, for you guys to, to help him out. And there's some great content providers here. Um, that's part of this show that can continue to to help this show grow and maybe you guys can take it bigger and better than I ever could and that's my, my that's my biggest hope um, you know uh, there's been so many people <sighs> and you know Jaron I mean you, you've got some pretty big shoes to fill I, I don't think that you know, any, any one of us could, could take this on, on our own. And so, um, you know, I, I'm very lucky that with, with the entire cast that, that, you know, that we have that you've built and, and everything that, uh, you know, hopefully together that we'll be able to, uh, you know, to, to, to at least hopefully do half a good as job as what you've done over the last several years. Yeah. I, I do want to list over some names though. I mean, of course the current cast, uh, everybody that's on the current cast, uh, that's continuing, uh, this work. Uh, I want to thank you. Um, I've never asked anybody to be on this show that I didn't think could contribute to this show in a good positive way to keep it fresh and evergreen and provide something positive for the fans.
all the past members. Uh, Amber Jensen, Mariah Baby, uh, Jason Walston, Plasticon, Daniel Arsenal, Proto Man, Craig Metcalf, who helped me start this show, and Sang Galvatron. Uh, Natsumi Ryu, uh, Hanging Up Chan, who still comes on from time to time, Tobias, Dr. Arkerville, uh, our first European <laughs> uh, cast member. Uh, the Maz, who was on a few times, uh, Travis Landry of Antique Roadshow, uh, Brandon, Brandon Boudreaux, I Am Unicron, uh, Mike Lyons, Swage 66, uh, John James, Guard Convoy, Tyler King, one of the original members of the cast, uh, TFR Cool, Megabus, Brett Lovell. Bryce Rutledge, who's selling his collection right as we speak. Bryce. Michael Swift, Cyburn 2. <laughs> Chad Williams. <laughs> Without him, TFLP wouldn't be here either. I'm not quitting collecting. I'm still going to be in the hobby. Uh, but for now, I will be able to be a fan. Something I haven't been able to be able to do in, in almost 10 years. You know, uh, you know, as a podcaster, I've got to have a comment, a thought, you know, so, uh, you know some way to produce content based on what uh, is relevant and fresh today. And it, it's very difficult, you know. And something comes out if I don't like it. I don't want to spend it terribly on the fandom and and have the fans not only look negative on us, but have to look at uh, at the fandom negatively. You know, even if it's if it's bad, then I try to steer away from it and focus on what's good. You know, now I can just focus on being a fan. Uh, you know, I want to be able to take more time to focus on my photography, something that I haven't had a chance to do in many many months. Um, you know, I, personal things in my life, my family. Uh, I've been spending a lot of time with my my mother. It was very ill, and uh, that's taken a lot of my time. I've missed several episodes because of that. You know, um, and other things that's been been going on in my life, and. Uh, you know, rather than have the show suffer uh, from my own inabilities and my own uh, lack of input, I thought it would be a good time to just step away and turn over uh, the the reins to somebody who could carry it on. I have full confidence in this cast. Um, for everything that they do and all the fresh stuff that they plan on doing with this show, uh, it may be different. Uh, but uh, but the core will remain the same. Um, uh, everybody that is can you continue to support the show? I don't see it as support for me. I see it as support for something great. Support these guys. Continue the Patreon. Continue the the, the subscriptions. I urge you to keep following TFYLP. Help. Keep it a great show. I just won't be a part of it on a regular basis anymore. I'll still maintain uh, some uh, a role for uh, for Lucas to help him on the back end because there's there's a lot of stuff to remember, a lot of technical things that that I've learned over the years, a lot of things that uh, that I can pass on to him. So I'll always be an advisor, and I'm always going to be available for him for that. But as an active member of this show, um, and as an active, as the face of this show, as a person that edited everything, I simply cannot do it anymore. But I am so thankful that it will continue. And I thank every one of you. Until next time. 
Sí, está.